about eight years ago, I was still living in the US, and some might say I was a little depressed, a little on the sad side, feeling unfulfilled in life. Now, I'm living in Germany. So, am I finally happy and fulfilled? Yes and no. But to make sense of it, let's take a step back. So in this video, I'm going to do one of my least favorite things and talk about myself. I'm gonna share a little bit about what I was doing in the US before I moved to Europe, why I wanted to move to Europe, how I ended up in Germany specifically, and after all of that time out of the US, do I miss the US? Am I happy here in Germany? What do I see for the future? All right, so I'm in the US. I go to college in Southwest Ohio, Miami University, and after college, I go to Chicago where I live in retrospect, it feels like I was there for years and years and years, but I think I was only there for about a year or two. I look back fondly on my time in Chicago because Chicago was the place that really made me a city person. I grew up in the suburbs of Cleveland and kind of far away enough from Cleveland that my association with the city was purely about sports teams. My dad did coach basketball at Case Western Reserve University, so I do have some memories of going into the city, but for the most part, it was so different from my suburb that I was kind of scared of cities. I didn't really know what to make of cities. And it wasn't until I was living, well, actually first when I was in college and I would visit my brother in Chicago that I started to be like, I, I like cities. I like getting on the train. I like not having to drive everywhere. And Chicago really kind of started that process of making me a city person. So after college, I move up to Chicago, and this was partly because that's where I had fallen in love with cities, but it was also because it's kind of the, the beginning, the minor leagues of comedy are there, and back then I was really into sketch comedy, writing, uh, a little bit of performance, and you go to Chicago to kind of start your career there. I always give like the baseball analogy. You've got Improv Olympics, Second City. This is like single A baseball, double A baseball with Saturday Night Live being like the big leagues. So that's why I started out there. But after a year or so, I started going back to Cleveland more often. And this is how oblivious I was to the fact that, you know, Cleveland is a city in and of itself, just as everything else in the US that isn't Chicago, DC, I don't know, LA, New York, you know, there's cities all over the place, great cities. And I remember looking, I remember looking at apartments in Cleveland, be like, wow, there's actually apartments in the city. Like I'm making myself sound so ignorant. I realize that, but this is just kind of the thought process I had was I didn't realize like people actually lived in Cleveland. You know, I grew up in a suburb that's only connection with the city, again, was the sports team. So you basically only went into the city to watch the sports teams and leave. Unfortunately, I just had no other sense of what Cleveland was or what any city was besides sports teams growing up. So, you know, I'm, you know, fooling around at the computer one day and I just start looking at apartments and I'm like, these are, these are really nice. And, you know, so I could live in Cleveland. And when I started going back and visit restaurants, all that kind of thing. And, and I really just started to fall in love with the city. And I'd ask myself, you know, like, why, why shouldn't I just live in Cleveland? You know, Cleveland has suffered such massive population loss. I don't really want to be another statistic. I want to go back to the city and give back to the city and help the city, you know, thrive. So I had like tunnel vision. I got to move back to Cleveland. That's where I belong. I'm moving back to Cleveland. So to kind of try to make what's inevitably going to be a long story, just a, a smidgen shorter, I get a job, I move back to Cleveland, and things are like heaven. Like I'm living in Cleveland, I, I'm happy, I'm living downtown. I sell my car, so I did have a car in Chicago, and the only reason I had it was basically to drive it around the block to move it, because if you're from Chicago, you know, they have the different parking days and which side of the street you could be on, so that's basically the only reason I had a car was to drive it around in circles and park it. Every so often, I would maybe drive it back to Cleveland, but far more often than that, I used to make a bus. So I'm in Cleveland, basically living my dream, and I think this is probably my early, mid-20s, and I'm through the moon. And then even even better, I end up meeting my future wife in Cleveland. So I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm loving Cleveland. But I can remember viscerally this moment, it was probably two years after moving to Cleveland, or I've been living downtown for about two years, it was December, I was at a coffee shop around the corner on East 4th Street. I don't think it's there anymore, unfortunately. Erie Island Coffee Company, RIP. And I was there and it was just miserable weather outside. And I grew up in miserable weather, but I don't know, just something about it really got to me. 
and I was writing on a laptop at the coffee shop and I was just, I remember writing, it was for like a writing exercise, you know, basically like, why, why aren't I happy here? This is where I wanted to be. What, what's going on? What's wrong with me? This eventually connected to another thought I had back in college that I've talked about before on this channel that I've always had the sense that maybe I would be happier living in Europe. I was in college when I first started to have this sense that like I don't really like cars or having to drive around to do everything. Um, and I don't necessarily like the idea, like you, we can't all live in New York City where they have good public transportation. I, I, you, you gotta pay my rent. So end of story. And I've got ridiculous stories about how I was so bent on moving to Switzerland because I was also doing some genealogy. My surname is Swiss German. And so I just had this idea, like, I'll just go apply for jobs in Switzerland. And, and I was a personal trainer at the time at a gym. That's also what I did in Chicago. I'll just uh, apply for jobs to be a personal trainer in Switzerland, one who doesn't speak any of their official languages. And that'll work out. Didn't work out. After about two years in Cleveland and I wasn't feeling so happy, I kind of brought up the idea with my wife that, you know, what about trying to live abroad? And... This led to a conversation about Costa Rica. I had never been at the time, but my brother studied abroad there and had nothing but great things to say. So I thought like, well, Costa Rica, you know, it's in the grand scheme, not like in an emergency, we could get back in a day. You know, it's two flights, but we could get back. It didn't feel as far as Europe, but also Europe was at that time unattainable because of visa reasons, um, cost of living. We just wouldn't be able to afford it because you know, well, first of all, if you want to get a job, you have to get a visa off the bat. In Costa Rica, I had found a graduate school, and although in retrospect, and what I would say to anybody else is that if you feel like you want to try living abroad, you don't need, like, a quote-unquote adult reason to do it. You can just go do it. For Costa Rica, at that time, I felt like I needed an adult reason to go live abroad. So I looked for graduate schools, and I did look in Europe too, but the benefit with Costa Rica was that my wife would be able to work while we're there whereas in Europe we would have to have enough money to go to for me to go to graduate school but for her to not work and it's just like that's just not feasible not realistic for us so we go to Costa Rica have a phenomenal experience cut a little bit short I was we were there for about 10 months a little bit less than a year and it's basically as soon as I got back to the US I was already thinking how can we move to Europe? And we were both kind of on board with like, well, it, it, it would be nice to experience it, see if it fits with our, what we would like our lifestyle to be a bit better. And the move ended up happening a lot faster than either of us expected. I moved back to the US in like June-ish, July, if I remember correctly. And about a year later, we were moving to Germany. And Germany, like also, that wasn't necessarily like the dream destination. No offense to Germany, I love living here now, I'm hoping to get citizenship, but really it was just about Europe. We wanted to experience Europe because we figured that for the most part, wherever we ended up, we'd get to experience the things that we wanted to experience. Access to different cultures, uh, better travel opportunities, better public transportation. So it was kind of like wherever we can get in Europe, truthfully, we would have probably preferred Spain because we just came off of living in Costa Rica, could speak a little bit of the Espanol and felt more comfortable in that language. So that would have made sense. But as I quickly learned, Germany, I've talked about this before in other videos, but for Germany, it's easier to move here if you don't speak German. You can move here, get a job in English and learn German along the way, and you should. But for other countries, I didn't really see that opportunity. You pretty much had to be able to be fluent French, Spanish, whatever. And although I was comfortable in Spanish, I don't think I would have been good to just like jump right into an office immediately. Maybe in a, in a, in a multiverse, I did that and just kind of, you know, caught up. But also it seemed like Germany had more startups that were more aggressively chasing candidates who were from so-called third state countries. So basically anything that's outside of the EU or uh, Switzerland, for example. What finally made it all happen, like I said, I was fresh off of Costa Rica, and in that gap year where I was back in the US, we were to think of a gap year in Cleveland where I'm from. Usually that's like far away, but really it was kind of like a gap year. In that gap year, I was not employed at like a big kid job. I was a freelance travel writer, kind of scratching by, and I went to a travel conference in Florida and just because that seemed like the adult thing to do. And while I was there, I remember hearing two women speaking 
in English to somebody who kind of went up to their booth. And then when the person went away, they were speaking Spanish with each other. And since I was fresh off of Costa Rica, I, I thought I'd be all suave and walk over there and go, Hola, me llamo yo. Podemos hablar en español si quieres. The idea being that maybe they're tired of speaking English all day and they want to speak Spanish. I don't know. I, I, I like to think that in, it endeared me to them a little bit. And basically what happened was I found out that they were from Mexico, but living in Germany. And I was like, oh, that's also a third state country. How did you make that happen? And that we stayed in touch and that eventually led to me getting a job in Dusseldorf. And that's how the whole journey to Germany, the Germany, the journey, the Germany. Boy, that's a tongue twister. The journey to Germany began. So now we're going to get back to the topic of, you know, I was feeling a little bit sad, depressed living in the US and was able to fix that living in Germany. Now, at first living in Dusseldorf, I was euphoric. I remember walking around, you know, there's the old town. You can, you can, first of all, you can walk just about everywhere and it's not weird. I remember doing a long walk uh, in August, like right when we moved there and we went up to the Japanese gardens. I just remember like gushing to Melanie being like, this is amazing. We can walk to this, there's trains. It was everything I had ever wanted in a place I'd never even heard of like two years ago, Dusseldorf, who knew? Now, something I had also known about myself is I do have very itchy feet and, you know, looking back at Chicago and my two stints in Cleveland, it was kind of always the same. Like every two years, I started to feel restless and like I had to move on no matter how euphoric I was about a place in the beginning. Now, the good thing for Germany is I had gotten past two years and was still really excited about living there or at least in Europe. Dusseldorf especially felt like very European because we were very close to the Dutch and French border. I, I took the train to Luxembourg. So it's, it really felt like that idea of, you know, we could travel to all these different countries. We were able to do that. And that's something we really wanted to do. So when we eventually moved to Berlin, three years after I moved to Dusseldorf, it wasn't about feeling restless. It was just more about, there's more opportunities for work and life and all that stuff, more international here in Berlin. I wasn't feeling restless. I was still really happy in Germany. And even looking back now, like Germany has given me so much. Uh, if, if you follow this channel at all, you know that I really love running. I love being outside. I love trail running. And I had done that a little bit in the US. It always feels a little weird to say how I wasn't like a big hiker out or outdoorsy person in the US because I had authored a few books about hiking around in Cleveland and in Minneapolis and St. Paul. But truth be told, I wasn't doing that regularly and that was only when my wife still had her car and we would go basically on hikes to so that I could write the book. But while we were in Costa Rica, she sold her car. So for that year back in Cleveland, neither of us had a car and I got really into road cycling and that was like my access to the outdoors. But I didn't really go on hikes. I think I did one trail race, not even really knowing that it was a trail race per se or that that was a sport. So it wasn't until living in Germany that, you know, that from Dusseldorf, we could hop on the train, go down like an hour, hour and a half and be in like a village. There's long distance hiking trails. It's all super accessible. And this just made me like really fall in love with the outdoors. And then I find out about trail running and then just forget about it. Like you can actually get to these races and run these trails without a car. I don't know if that happens if I stay in the US because Although trail running is obviously super popular in the US and so is hiking and all these things, I really don't like cars and I really don't want to own one. So I don't know, maybe maybe I still stay more with road cycling and that's just my outlet, but Germany has made the outdoors more accessible to me and therefore kind of like unleashed this more outdoorsy adventurous person. So I'm very grateful to Germany for that. However, I've now been in Berlin for four years. Dusseldorf was three years, so that's seven years in Germany. Am I happy finally? Is it, am I feeling restless like I had in Cleveland and Chicago and Cleveland again? <laughs> again? Yeah. Yes and no. See, I'm filming this in November and the sensation I'm feeling right now is described in German as the Habs blues, literally just the fall blues. And that happens because at the last weekend of October or first weekend of November, the time changes and it's dark by like four in the afternoon. And it's not even that just that the sun goes down around four in the afternoon. It's that it's just dark all day often. It's just cloudy and it, it's it's depressing. It's not, not good for the mental health. But in the grand scheme of things, when I intellectually think about, you know, how it's gotten me in the trail running and the outdoors more, and I generally feel more secure here than I ever did in the US, Germany has made me as happy as I think any place can make me. Yeah, we've got the Herbst Blues right now in Germany, but 
you know, if I lived in what's a sunnier place right now, it would be intolerably hot for me in another time of year. So no place is perfect. I intellectually know that. It's a little harder when you're living through the moment. You're just like, why? Why is this a thing? Why can't there be the sun? But intellectually, I know that Germany has been great to me. Europe's been great to me for the most part. And that Germany truly has made me as happy as I think any other place could possibly make me. But I think one of the things I learned from the pandemic was that at some point you have to make your own destiny if you want to get the life that you want. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Sure, if it were up to me, I'd be traveling half or full time, writing books about stories that interest me and about different travel experiences. But the, that's just not how it works. And these days in the publishing world, if you talk to different authors, you need a big social media following. And that's something I kind of resisted for a long time. And I'll be 100% honest, it's not like I had like a shit ton of followers. I was like, oh no, I don't need those followers. No, 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 thank you. It was more I didn't do the things that you're su theoretically supposed to do to get a ton of followers. I don't like editing together flashy TikTok reel, TikTok reels, getting them all mixed up, showing my age. But I don't like editing together those like loud, obnoxious, fast things. I've dabbled with it, but it's just not my jam. I like telling stories that you need, to, it's like a conversation and you kind of ingest it. You're not like inhaling it with a funnel. It's not like, it's not a beer bong. Like think of a beer bong. I don't, that's not how I like to enjoy a beer. I like to sip and drink it and enjoy it. That's the kind of storytelling I like to do and the content I like to make. So that's essentially why I've returned to YouTube with Gusto. I have no idea how many of my more original subscribers remember, but in another lifetime, I was doing something else on this channel that's wildly different from what I'm doing now. And I've always had this channel kind of there dormant. I'd occasionally throw something up there just cause, and I had no direction with it. But over the past, let's say nine to 10 months, I've taken it more seriously and see it as a potential avenue in the long run for me to tell the stories I kind of prefer telling and, and want to tell. I'm very fortunate and lucky that I've gotten the written for some pretty impressive publications and I'm very grateful for those opportunities. And something I've kind of learned is that just because you get your name in some publication doesn't mean that suddenly you're gonna get the book deal. And I was kind of naive. I kind of thought, you know, oh, if I write one article for uh, BBC, that that's then, then I'm, the agent will come and then I'll, I can write the book that I've always been wanting to write. It doesn't work like that. And more and more it seems that people have to kind of, again, build their own destiny. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do here. I want to tell stories and I'm going to use this space to do that, to tell the stories I want to tell. I'm not going to just chase after things for the sake of chasing after them. And you know, if something bigger comes out of that, great. And if not, at least I can say I gave it my best shot. The last thing I want to do is look back with regret. Nobody wants that. So does Germany make me happy enough to stay here in the long run? I also yes to no, I don't know, also still up in the air. I really want to get citizenship before I even think about leaving here. I don't want to go down too much of a tangent, but it's it's very draconian way of looking at things. Basically, it stems out of this old idea that you can't be loyal to two countries. Ridiculous, but they're trying to reform it. And in theory, by April of next year, you should be allowed to get dual citizenship. But it's so bureaucratic here and things are backed up that they already estimate that it'll take at least two years to get citizenship once you start applying. So who knows what will happen there. I definitely know that I feel very much at home in Europe and I don't want to lose the connection to Europe. So that's why the idea of like leaving and giving up, you know, the security we've gotten with the, the visa I have now, I, I don't want to give that up. Definitely not. So although I don't have citizenship here, I do have permanent residency and that's something I don't want to give up. But in the grand scheme, I've always said that I would love the opportunity to experience life in other countries, on other continents, and not necessarily to move for, you know, seven years like I have in Germany, like even just experience it for six months, you know, learn different languages. I still want to do all those things. And so I think in the grand scheme, I've always been working towards some kind of, you know, I don't think I'd ever want to be full-time nomadic. Like you see all the, you know, that's like the whole thing now is to go, oh, Digital nomad, I don't wanna be moving like once every month, but I can see like doing eight months someplace and four months someplace else. And based on how the Haps Blues are hitting us this year, I think come this time next year, 
well, earlier than that, but I think when we're think when when we're eyeing November 2024, I think we'll think more seriously about do we just want to take the train to southern Spain and try and just be there for a month just so we could, you know, have one more month with the sun? That's a conversation that I imagine we'll be having. <laughs> but again, it's still all up in the air right now. Who knows what could happen? All I know is that in the meantime, I am very much excited for early 2024. I'll be going to Kenya, taking part in a running camp for one week in E10, and then doing some traveling around the country before that. I'll be running my second ultra marathon in March in Barcelona and filming all kinds of short and long form videos in between for this channel. So yeah, stay tuned. Subscribe, hit the little bell notification thing so you don't miss anything, and leave a comment letting me know how I can best serve you. Because at the end of the day, that's all I'm here for. At least I think. That or I'm just some small cosmic accident. Who knows?